Okay. Thanks for sharing your knowledge on the worker communism and the difference between the other tendencies of the Marxism. That's great. That's great to know. And the thing about council thing, that one is really inspiring because as you know, in Myanmar, we also have a revolution. So that idea of council is really great. I hope I can share some knowledge to my comrades yeah. as well. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. And going back to the uh, previous question, I think uh, one of the questions was left to answer. Uh, what do you think the next stage of this revolution will be? Will there be any M struggle in the future? Oh, yes, yes, I forgot everybody. Yeah. Well, I believe you probably at one point would end up having that because bourgeoisie, they would not, or the, the, the regime will not just go away by itself. Even in the previous one, that everything was organized, that is, the West talked to the Shah, took him out, calmed the army, and brought the Khomeini. So everything was staged. Everything was just going according to the scenario that David wrote. Still, we had an uprising, two days of armed uprising in Tehran, maybe a couple of other cities, that the young people, got hold of arms, attacked the prisons, and freed the political prisoners. And that made the job of the Islamic regime very difficult. When you have arms in the hands of the citizens, it's very difficult. I'm not talking like US, that everyone goes shoots at the school. This was a different kind of situation, yeah. especially part of the armed youth were the leftists. But as I said, the left was flawed. These anti imperialists very easily sort of gave in and started even part of it actually became so, so nasty. They even cooperated with the regime, even in catching lefties, torturing and everything. Yes, like one of them is Tudor Party, which used to be pro Soviet Union. And at that time was also still pro Soviet till Soviet Union was collapsed. And there was another one that was called Fadai Majority. They are very, very, uh, they're really hated by most people because they saw their roles in cooperating with the Islamic regime. Traitors, maybe people would call them. Yeah. But uh, so I believe armed struggle becomes a necessity at one point. Yeah. When I don't. Because you just don't want to have arms and just start killing because you're going to get killed first. Yeah. Okay. So you want it to be organized. That's why I think councils are important. Because even if you have an armed struggle, the best way to organize it is through the council. So it's planned, it's clear, it's no chaos. And this is how you should do it. So I think armed struggle becomes a necessity at one point, but we have to see when that point comes. Yeah. That's all I wanted to know. That is a really great insightful movement for me as well. I learned a lot of new information because like, I have read some works of Ansar Hakmet. I also talked to you about translating some of his work. Uh, yeah, some yeah. Of the, yeah, yeah, some of the things that you mentioned today, they are really helpful to me as well. They are really insightful. That's really great. Thanks for your help. Yes. Thanks Thank for your you contribution. Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity. And I hope all success for what's happening in Myanmar. I know it's a very horrible regime there as well. Yeah. So I hope people can get rid of that regime and free themselves, free their own councils as well.